It's showtime. We're back on for the 100 and whatever episode this is. 140 something. I'm going to look at my notes. 143 for this episode. <laughs> and I was looking through. So I, I said a couple of episodes ago, I had had a, a Justin Kirchhoff on director, filmmaker, Justin Kirchhoff, uh, which, by the way, Jazz, you might want to get over and look at his studio. He has a, a LED projection wall like they use on the Mandalorian. Yeah. To do all, to do all the effects. And th this they're giving tours. And by the way, they're going to have an open house on March 20th for the public. Oh, damn. So it's you're familiar with the LED, right? That they use yeah, the, yeah. The, the John Favreau was kind of the, the pioneer. The volume? Yeah. Yeah, the volume. And so he's got the first volume in Austin, maybe the first volume in the state of Texas. Um, really cool. Really cool stuff. So Damn. Yeah. Was, uh, was, send me information on that. I'm down. Yeah. So I'm, I'm going to try to go. I'm, yeah, I will send you information for sure. And Justin Kirchhoff, uh, co-production house. Give him another plug there. Um. So while Justin was here, we were talking about, I was talking about my, uh, how I'm, I'm pro mask. I wear a mask and I, I'm all in on the mask because I think they work. Um, but I, I go mask, I'm a mask and a face shield person, but I, you know, even myself, I've gotten to a point where I'm kind of just like up to here with, you know, you know, COVID, uh, fatigue. Yeah, dude, it was hitting me hard last week, man. Some it was like ago, Wednesday, yeah. like with South by Southwest coming up. Yeah, and I know it was canceled last year, but it's like all online this year. Mm -hmm. And it's like, man, it was just like all of a sudden I realized I haven't gigged in like over a year. Like I haven't been on stage in like over a year. So it's just like, yeah, yeah I'm like, I, I think that's the first time in like 20 years I could say that. Yeah. That's that's rough. It's rough for everybody. So COVID fatigue for sure. So I got the to the point where like, yeah, I'll I'll wear my my goddamn mask, but I don't give I don't give a fuck that it has queso all over it. I went up. I went all, <laughs> I went all throughout my day a few weeks ago, ran a few errands around town, and then driving around with queso all over my mask. Actually, it was all over my face shield, and I've got proof here. Actually, I, I photographed it that I went. As you can see right there, <laughs> I had queso all over my face shield, and I went throughout. I, I kept this on. In fact, I didn't wipe it off for, for. I left it on for a few weeks, and that's my level. <laughs> that's my level. I finally cleaned it off, but it was it was full. It was covered in in case. It was like a queso windshield. <laughs> I, don't, I don't even know. And then I, I'm a, I'm a net gator guy i'm the neck oh yeah guy. i've got a I few have... uh net gators i got yeah. my tiger one got a tiger mask you know it was like yeah i got a little bored with wearing masks but if i can cosplay as a tiger i'm in oh yeah yeah if you can cosplay as a, some, some favorite mask <laughs> yeah. uh not not so bad so yeah so that that was me running around for a while for a couple of weeks with that face shield covered in queso and then we we asked the question on that episode how do you get queso on your face shield and i had to think about it for a little while i was like how did i get queso on my face shield well first of all queso just queso <laughs> in general but uh, i had left it on the dining room table when i was chowing down on queso and i'm pretty sure i just dripped queso all over all over the mask <laughs> it to me nearby. Um, and then i put it on before i realized it had queso on it and i got in the car and i was like oh and I was like, and all of a sudden you had like the cheesy version of a Jackson Pollock painting on your mask. <laughs> exactly. I was like this with the shield. I was kind of like, oh, there's some uh, uh, liquid still left on there. Of the, of the <laughs> See, that's where just when you turn it around and just. <laughs> yeah, just flip it and then just. Yeah. <laughs> I may not be COVID positive, but I was definitely queso positive. Yeah. Oh, I don't, I don't know if that's, if that's funny. But yeah, anyway, queso covered face shield. Well, anyway, on this 100, and we regret, we digress, but we had some fun doing it. Uh, I'm Stephen Presley, and over to this side, virtually, 
Jazz won in the Thunderpop hey. Dome. <laughs> Back in the Thunderpop Dome. And uh, we'll, we'll get you some applause here coming up as soon as I can locate it. All right. So we got big show planned. We, uh, because of some computer issues, we were going to do this earlier in the week. Oh, I've got to turn a fan off. Hang on a second. Okay. <laughs> I'll keep talking while he's turning the fan off. Yeah, we were going to do the show earlier in the week, but because of some computer issues, probably caused by the blizzard. My, basically, the logic board went out on my computer, so I had to send it to the shop. So I'm using a, a like a prehistoric computer that's still running uh i'm very glad that i still have this computer as a backup but anyway we uh, delayed our one division reaction show the, the reaction show to uh the finale and so we're we're finally going to get to do that which i'm excited about and then also oh just, just my little camera over here while we're, we're adjusting things oh, i thought we we're hugging <laughs> yeah, we'll do a virtual, virtual hug uh because i'm using an old because i'm using an older computer I had to use a different camera. My mirrorless camera doesn't work on this. Doesn't con I couldn't get it connected to this older computer, so I had to run out to Best Buy and I got this Logic Logic Tech webcam. But it's it's kind of nice because I can kind of pick it up and and move it around, and it's a little more uh, intimate. Like I can take it and literally just I can start. You can get real intimate on me, um, just all up on me, and you can see the intensity that I have. When I'm getting ready for a show, I got my game <laughs> face on. You clenching my teeth, and I, I've got the intensity. It's my game face. I'm ready for for nerdery. <laughs> <laughs> I see the nerd, nerdery intensity in my eyes. <laughs> it allows me though to just pick this camera up because it's so small, and I can kind of just move around. You can see the rest of the studio. What's look? I haven't done a tour on a live stream of what. That this it's very sad though to look across the room instead of seeing you jazz to see that that damn ring light <laughs> in my underwear sitting on the on the couch over there. There's DB8, uh, Ray, a Thanos, um, a little pug statue. It's a tribute to my rest in peace, Gus. Um, oh. Uh, I've got uh, Tron guy here somewhere. Yeah, there's Tron guy. Oh yeah. Little, little thing. Okay, so anyway, there's a, oh. Got bored the other day and went went out and got a Lego Batman. We were talking about Lego Batman before the. Oh hell uh, yeah! <laughs> and, uh, this is supposed to be the Keaton Lego Batman from the Tim Burton Batman. Oh damn! So okay, I'm gonna put this back. So anyway, that's something I couldn't do with the other camera, with the other setup, because the other camera would be really far away from me, and it's this big camera, and just like going over there, and it's kind of intimidating to just kind of grab it and start moving it around and stuff in the middle of a show. You're afraid something's going to get unplugged, but this one's just like a plug and play. All right, so in this episode, it's our one division reaction to the finale. We're going to hit some Easter eggs, some theories, some rumors possibly, the gossip that you would normally expect Agnes, the neighbor, <laughs> to be indulging in probably now the most famous na nosy neighbor in television history oh yeah He's taking over the role the, the the role of the most famous so we're gonna hit one division reaction but to open the show we'll have a thunder take and our thunder take coming up on thunder pop okay we should have done that earlier but anyway the thunder take we're going to hit kim's convenience the cancellation of Kim's Convenience, which me and Jazz are very devastated by. Uh, our favorite, one of our favorite shows. Easily, right now, my favorite comedy show on television. So, very devastating news. We'll have our usual tropes, agree or disagree, thoughts and advice, all of that on this episode. And and something for you, whatever it is you want. You tell us, and we'll we'll <laughs> see what we can do about it. Try to provide, provide what you want, because we're here for you. It's not about us, it's about you. It's all about you, it's not about us, it's about you. Okay. Fun to pop. It's time for fun to pop. Don't make me say it again. Fun to pop. Fun to pop. Fun to pop. I will not say it again. Okay, I lied. So 
Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we're here. We made it. We had a little technical difficulties even at the, the beginning of our show. We were trying to get ready, so we're kind of coming down from all that mess. Uh, we literally spent the first nine minutes of the show talking about queso and uh, webcams. So we're we're gonna get right, <laughs> in, right into the, the good stuff uh, of our show. And uh, once again, it's good to have Jazz One back in virtually into the Thunderpop Dome. Uh, a favorite show of ours. We got. It's been a tough. I would say stretch of 10 days for you jazz, because I know the first, the beginning of the week, we started on Monday with the news that Kim's convenience had been surprisingly canceled. And the reason why it's such a surprise, one of the biggest reasons why this is surprise, such a surprise is last year at the close of season four, the announcement was made that they had renewed for five and six, five and six. And that was, that was the big news. And then, so everybody as Kim's convenience fans was like, Oh yeah, we're, we're good to go. We're, we're set. We've got more episodes, more episodes for a couple more years. And me thinking as well, Oh sure. Two years, but I bet we get this show for seven, eight, the way things are going. Cause it's just now being discovered by a larger audience. Oh in yeah. Last, in the last year, it's been a show in Canada for uh, five years. Uh, but it hit Netflix. When did it hit Netflix for the first time? And go uh, I, at, right after the second season dropped. Uh, you know, because yeah. they drop them on Netflix like after the season finishes on CBC up in Canada. Yeah. So I believe it was just like uh, we call it after the second season uh, finished its run in Canada. But yeah, I just stumbled across it on uh, Netflix one day. Like I, you know, got like a Korean best friend. I have a. Uh, you know, my best friend's mother, like my, my old ma, you know, has like semi unofficially adopted me, especially since losing my parents. So it's like, man, I have an old ma, you know, mm -hmm. and it's just like, then it's like, you got Canadians. I used to work for Canadian football league team in my uh, early twenties. Then uh been shooting for Nardwar for a long time. You know, it's like, got, I got, I got Koreans. I got Canadians, you know, and I was like, this is my jam. I'm like totally getting this. Yeah. And it went from like, oh, that's a good sitcom. Now I became like a one person street team for this show. I was just trying to hip everybody to it. And then it was like, okay, it was that good quirky show I found on Netflix. Then I was like, man, this is like probably one of my top five sitcoms ever. And then like another season would drop. I'm like, this might be top three. And it's just like, I hate to say it, like with this, uh, with the fourth season, and uh, kind of illegally watching uh, the fifth season. I'm like, man, this is like the best sitcom ever. Okay. Well, yeah. Allegedly. <laughs> Allegedly, I found it on not me, too, but. <laughs> America, something, something. But yeah, we couldn't wait. That's how big of fans we are of this show. Yeah. The show has a lot, the show has a lot in common with Shits Creek because it comes from the same network in Canada. And Shits Creek also is a show that started off as a kind of a cult following and then sort of built grew more and more uh and until it became this international sensation and then lately and i have a feeling because of the news of the cancellation even more people because it made made news this past week i'm sure even more people have heard about it with the coming of shang chi which one of its star the stars of the show is about to become a huge megastar on a whole other level because they're about to become a part of the mcu the marvel oh, yeah. universe also paul sung lee the principal, the star of the show, has um, been on Mandalorian this past season. So a couple of the characters from the show suddenly have gotten some uh, new attention on a larger scale that they didn't have previous, and well deserved. But especially in the, in the case of uh, in the case of the Shane Chi, when that comes out, I've heard that Marvel MCU is planning on maybe making him the new center of the MCU much of the same way that Tony Stark and Chris Evans were in years past. Oh, wow. Which would mean him crossing over into many different movies, TV shows over several years and other storylines, uh, and being part of a uh, big part of the MCU from what I understand. Uh, yeah, for those who aren't following this so real close, it was the producers call like the showrunners yeah. call. Yeah. Like they're just, uh, ready to move on to different things. And it was just like, uh, saw a couple of like really amazing, like, uh, we call them Instagram live or whatever. Yeah. Uh, with, uh, you know, uh, 
Simu uh, Liu and uh, Paul Sung Young Lee. You know, just like you, you figure like, OK, at first I thought maybe they are pulling out because they got big stuff. You know, mm -hmm. uh, I haven't heard anything officially, but I have a strong feeling we're going to see Paul, you know, Appa in something Star Wars, you know, going forward. Uh, but then we know like Simu's got you know, about to be in the Marvel Universe. Mm -hmm. But like to see these guys, they were on uh, Instagram live. And just talking about this, yeah. I mean, these are two guys fixing to go into like huge things and they are like, you can literally feel the heartbreak over this show. You know, it's yeah. just like, you know, I don't know, man. It's like, I think we've said it before, before, um, like star Wars, man, you know, I know it's a movie, but it's more than a movie, you know, like Kim's convenience. Like, I know it's a sitcom, but, man, I think it was, like, so much more than a sitcom, you know. As I mentioned before, you got Canadians, you know, got Koreans. But, man, there's just so many, like, universal stories in that show, you know. Rifts in family, you know, marriage, generational stuff. And it was just, like, I don't know, man. This, this show meant a lot. There's uh, Paul Sung Lee there. Uh already a big star wars nerd before he appeared on star wars actually uh oh you got the photo where we have the uh marvel universe star wars universe and the thunder pop universe <laughs> yeah it's awesome and and paul suddenly really nice guy one of the nicest yeah. guys uh very uh very nice to his fans on on social media and uh in interacting with him and you met you met the two of them at south by southwest yeah years back and had a great interaction with him um the big, big surprise. I suspect there's more, and I it was even alluded to in those lives that you were, you were mentioning uh, that there was probably some more stuff that we'd find out later. I think in one of the with one of the lives that one of them mentioned. I know Paul Sung Lee said that he was he was mad, he was disappointed about the uh, about, but he also was very happy and proud at the same time. And that's Canadian anger. Like they, I mean, like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, they don't show their anger as like well as we do. Uh, but yeah, you could just like feel the hurt, man. It's like yeah. you know having like my tiniest, teeniest toehold, you know, in the business there for a while, man. It was just like I know that heartbreak when some gets canceled. You oh, know, no. I remember you know nearly having a TV show you know picked up, um, but. Yeah, like I know that kind of heartbreak, and it was just like it was. It made me respect those guys so so much because, like, man, like I said, I don't know anything official on uh, Paul on Appa, you know, right. his Star Wars feature, but I, I would really, I'd be willing to put money. There's he's going to be in Star Wars something for a while, and then you know, Simu like fixing to be like possibly the next Tony Stark, and you know, these guys are just like in the fields over this canadian show you know i was just like sometimes it means more you know it's just i mean it just it's on a lot of levels man it's like to hear them talk and uh you know have you know korean like people you know are like family to me it's just like representation matters you know it was just like there were some stories being told that you really haven't seen told on TV before. Yeah. Yeah, it was, it's a really special show and it was groundbreaking. Um, in a time where you need shows that was pushing the messages that show was pushing in a way that it was pushing it. Uh, and we'd heard some stories. I mean, I I'm something's going on behind the scenes here. Why the show's any, because the show's ratings are as high as they've ever been. The audience is still growing. And with the emergence of, of the two actors and there being more high profile um, with MCU and Star Wars, new audience was still coming. More audience was still coming. The show was still growing. The, uh, let's just say the upside of this show was still pretty big. Yeah. Even at the level that it was to where, you know, look at Shit's Creek. That's a show that, that it really hit its peak in the last couple of years. A lot of people, especially during the pandemic, a lot of people found Shit's Creek. They had never found Shit's Creek before. And that show became sort of this mega sensation, winning tons of Emmys. I feel like that Kim's Convenience still hadn't even peaked yet. 
That's oh, what's yeah. really upsetting. That's what's really upsetting about its departure. Uh, I don't know what happened. I don't know if it was a situation with CDC. I know that the, the official reason is that the uh, the creator and the creators. And it's Troy, I believe. I can't remember the uh, other guy, his name. Yeah, the, the two the two fellows that, that created that were the creators of the show. Started off as a play, by the way, uh, with Paul Sung Lee in the original cast, if I'm not mistaken. One of the original cast members was the one he was one of the like two or three that went from the play to the actual series, which is such a great deal for an actor to to get a play that becomes a TV series and then get to go and follow that into being a TV series. Um, Man, it's that little show that could, bro. <laughs> absolutely. So this show uh, still it seemed like it had a big upside. It hadn't reached its full potential creatively, or or even peaked uh, its full potential as an audience. Um, so. More, more was to come for the show. The arcs, the story arcs of these characters, there were a lot of story arcs, and that's my biggest concern. I know one of the creators said that season five had been their best season yet, or their best season, you know, and I'm like, I'm great with that, but if the show doesn't end with a proper tie-up to these characters, which is my, like my, my biggest pet peeve as a consumer of content, television movies, yeah. is to not tie up a story arc. Uh, I could give you two. There's two other examples. Uh, Glow on Netflix. That was canceled by Netflix, but they left that show with some unfinished business. Uh, the Dallas reboot reboot on from years ago on, on TNT left on a big cliffhanger, canceled it, had a pretty loyal audience, didn't tie that up. If they leave the show on season five with, with, with a kind of a cliffhanger, I can't agree with you that season five was the greatest season ever because any season that leaves us with a cliffhanger that's not tied up can't go into that category for me. Now, will I still love these 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 actors and the people that worked on the show? Absolutely. But will I have a problem with them leaving a show with a clip with with multiple cliffhangers? I'll have a big problem with that, and I'll 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 continue to gripe about that until they fix it and do more. Don't shows. make me don't make me write. Kim's convenience fanfic. <laughs> yes. We're going to do animated. Me and Jazz are going to do the season six. Animated. It's going to be like a Kim's convenience anime. We're going to do anime. It's going to be anime. And we're going to have it. Uh, we're going we're gonna to self-distribute it. And if you're not going to finish that season, we get to the finale in April and you leave us with, with some, if you leave us with some damn cliffhangers, creators, and don't tie those up. We're making fan fiction Kim's convenience. Me and Jazz, we're going to hit the ground running in mid-April. We'll have our first production meeting the next day. I'm on it, bro. We'll do a micro season, six episodes. We'll do them the same length. Everything as far as the same. We'll start writing those episodes. We're going to, we're going to tie, you're not going to tie it up. We're going to tie it up. Man, it was like in the, uh, the uh, Instagram live, man. Simu was talking about... How even with the uh, Marvel stuff, he was making time, you know, like yeah. that show was like that important to him. Yeah. And just, to, you know, kind of the man, re, was in, uh, the man was in tears. Yeah. Just kind of reconnecting with, you know, he was like sad for his character, man. That, yeah. that show was like touching. I mean, just kind of him, Jung and, you know, Abba's like relationship, like, you know, the huge rift. And it's like, man, I don't had family members like, like that, you know, headbutts and stuff. Mm -hmm. And uh, just, I don't know, man. It, it just, that show really touched me. And just, at first I thought it might just have been uh, Paul and Simu, like, moving on. But that, was a, that was a lot, a lot of fans went there right away. And that's why, uh, that's why Simu went, went on live and said, I know what you're thinking. He tweeted actually first. And he said, I know what you're thinking. Because I, you know, but it's not that. I wanted to continue on with this show. I really was wanting to direct an episode. I was wanting, I was, I was really pushing this past season for them to start to advance my character and him finally make some decisions about his life. And also the big thing is, you know, spoiler alert, if you haven't watched it, you might, if you haven't even watched season one, you may back up now if you're interested in the show. Uh, but, and you should be interested in the show, but you know, the relationship between him and, and, and Appa, his dad. Oh yeah. Uh, yeah. Still, kind of still tying that up. There's the health issues uh, with Mrs. Kim. Uh, and her dealing with her health issues that's been a big part of this season. So, so many things. Terrence, is he going to bring out the, the the Daisy Duke shorts again? 
Uh, <laughs> also, you know, I'm a couple episodes behind on this this illegal season yeah. that we're watching together. I'm a couple episodes behind, but uh, we haven't seen also <laughs> even some of the sub stories like Pastor Nina, who was dating the guy from last season, the guy that everybody couldn't stand from the church. Oh, I yeah. Now, I wondered whether they're still together or not, because I had not seen. Uh, it, you may know already because you've watched a few more episodes than me illegally <laughs> on, the, on the down low. Um, anyway, yeah, this do you. So let me, let me ask you this. Do you think that something cooler heads will prevail? And, and so, and by the way, nothing nowadays ever goes away. We get reboots, sequel series. I mean, Breaking Bad went off television. It gets a spinoff and then it gets a movie, standalone movie post last season. Arrest and Development was a sort of a show that didn't really hit big until after it was already off TV and it got canceled and it hit big later in in uh, can, in uh, cable and uh, DVD sales and whatnot. And then it got another season like three, four years later on Netflix. And uh, they, there's talk that they would maybe do it again. They might come back and do another rest and development, but like maybe two or three years down the road. Also with the um, the Seinfeld, not the Seinfeld show, but the guy that made Seinfeld. Larry, is it Larry David? Larry David, yeah. His show on uh, Curb, Your, Curb Your Enthusiasm. Big Gap took a huge break, came back and did another season. So nowadays it's pretty commonplace for shows that they just come back whenever they feel like it and do another season. They just drop another season on you. Do, Man, you think, I, do you think that could happen with Kim's Convenience? Do you think Cooler Heads will prevail? They will eventually give us that sixth season, even if it's like two years down the road? I mean, will there be a movie? What do you think? I think with that cast, like, as much as they would want to, I just think there's going to be a certain time window. Like, I would be happy with, like, a made-for-TV movie, you know? Whether, yeah. like, give us a two-hour, you know, movie on Netflix, you know, same production value, yeah. you know, make it like a super long, like two hour, you know, episode, you know, like well, let yeah. John and Appa kind of reconnect, you know, reconcile yeah. their differences and just tie up some of the plot points, you know, like or micro, I think, or micro season, like with oh, yeah. episodes, four, epi yeah, it, four, ep four or five episodes. Yeah. Yeah. And it's just like, man, it's not just uh Paul and Simu. It's just like, uh, man, it's like the whole cast, man. Like I see big things happening for just like everybody on yeah. that show. You know, I mean, yeah. the craziest thing is like how is somehow just, I just gave a street team for that show after, you know, seeing two seasons of it, yeah. you know, like, you know, I'm telling people, everybody I knew about it. I don't know who all I got up on it, but it was crazy to hear I, how it was like, I think yeah, you, I, was yeah I think I may have told you that it was like, the same way, you know, somebody, I think Filoni's wife, Dave Filoni's wife, yeah. was like, saw a few episodes on Netflix and just got Dave Filoni on it. And that's how he got into, you know, Paul in the Star Wars, you know, in the Mandalorian. You know, it's just been that show, like, you tell people about. Yeah. Yeah, no, it's, a, it, yeah, word of mouth. And a lot of it, a lot of the show did, because it's on Netflix, it was easy for people to access uh, in the States. And as as it, word of mouth, it did build up from that. A lot of people started finding out about the show, and it still had a huge upside. Like I said, uh, I hope I hope there's a petition. I've signed both petitions that are on uh, change.org. Um, I tried to sign them multiple times. <laughs> yeah, I've, I've I've signed both petitions. I'm hoping there's a petition. If you're a fan of the show, go sign the petitions. They're on. I've, I posted one to my Facebook earlier today. Um, are you signing the petition, Jazz? Not yet. Here's my thing, man. I love that show community, right? Yeah. And when uh, Dan Harmon uh, left as showrunner, yeah, like it wasn't the same, you know. Like they, yeah. uh, I, I get, I think he came back for like the fifth season or something. But like they refer to that one season as the gas leak season. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know. <laughs> yeah, it's it, it's true. If you don't get that right. If you try to continue on with the show without the the original creators, showrunners, if you don't get the replacements for them right, it is going to be a huge uh, uh, a huge drop off, and and what you're used to the show being. Uh, it's amazing how big of a difference it can be. Oh yeah. Still, I say I set up a meeting if I'm the creators. I got one more idea. I thought of this because it's still I'm still 
really sad and mad and and un, and just generally sad about it. But if you're the creators, could you have called in and, and maybe uh, took some pitches from people for the sixth season from a team? Because there's so many people out of work, I'm sure. TV writers, showrunners, there's got to be a saturation of them in the market of people that could have come in and done pitches for them, and then they could have hired someone based on a pitch. I don't know. I don't know if this is normal practice in, in the industry of how it's done, but you could have taken pitches from people. You maybe had a chance to employ someone in this job market in a, in a high profile television job that could have definitely have made their made someone else's career like it made yours. And the idea with being the idea being that it's a to, to, to do the sixth season and then wrap everything up and you could stay on as a consultant and still have some say in the final scripts from afar, but not be involved in the show. And you still get those checks. Man, I'm not normally a cynical person. And, it, you know, it just might be a little cultural difference between Canadians and Americans. Yeah. But part of me wonders if, uh, like, the showrunners from uh, Kim's, wonder if they have, like, a, a network deal, like a like a U.S. network deal. Like, it, it's possible. Like what, it's definitely possible. Yeah. I mean, for them to have a show, like, really just on the precipice of just like blowing up like Shit's Creek level. Right. Yeah. You know, what would make them pull back? You know, what would make them like, okay, we're done with this. We need to move on to our next thing. Like part of me thinks even, I don't know, man, I, I have a feeling from the people who brought you Kim's convenience. Here's the show on CBS or, yeah, ABC or something like that. Yeah. And every hit maker has got a couple other hits in their back pocket. Some have several hits in their back pocket, depending on, on how, who they are, but you know, Prince had several hits and, um, you know, Rick Astley had a couple of hits, but they had some, you know, multiple hits. So it's possible. And here's the thing with the, in the, in the age of the streaming wars where all these streaming platforms are competing with each other, and they're all trying to find a way to keep up with the Joneses. Someone in the streaming space could have offered them a huge deal as well to create shows for them. They know they, they have the talent. Uh, and, and by the way, some of these other actors from this show may end up following them wherever they go and doing a new show. I don't think all of them, because they're not going to just take the whole cast and do a different show with the same cast. All that would still be very good because it's a great cast. But I think they may take, you may see a few people um from this cast end up following them to wherever they're going i i predict i could predict that for sure and i'll be glad to see that another oh, great yeah. another great show we'll move on to go ahead and move on to one division the one division finale a week ago or over a week ago now uh this show uh set up phase four for the mcu in a big way um really another groundbreaking show but in a different way and how it's patience and storytelling and how it built up to this climactic finale. A um, lot, a lot of stuff in the show, a lot of stuff going on. Uh, what are your final thoughts on the finale for one division? Man, I tell you, like, um, you know, I, I was there for it, man. I, um, I remember seeing like Twitter um, people going, you know, like they're not digging these first couple of episodes. Yeah. And I realized like this was just kind of creating the world and, you know, being someone who's enjoyed television, you know, seeing like the fifties and sixties and like seventies and nineties, you know, sitcom, like how perfectly they nailed those. And then it was just like each episode had a little bit more and more, you know, the meta story and stuff. And then, uh, man, what was it? That seventh episode or eighth ep episode? Like, yeah. you know, Just, to, I, you know, it's, I've been through some major losses, you know, like been widowed, you know, lost parents, birth and adoptive parents. I've, uh, you know, family members murdered, you know, like I've been through some loss. I wasn't expecting this superhero series that, you know, was doing quirky covers of sitcoms or whatever to like hit me just like in the chest like that, you know, when uh, Paul Bettany 
you know, his uh, vision. He was like, you know, I think that line was like, what is what is grief but love persevering or, or something so close to that? And I'm like, ooh, man, that that hit, you know. Yeah, that was deep. And deep yeah, and just, you know, and just kind of relating to Wanda, you know, like with the pain of mourning, you yeah. know, and yeah. just, man, shoot, you no. Know, if I was the Scarlet Jazz, I could bring some of these people back or, you know, even just one, you know. Would you wear that same outfit for the finale? I don't know. I'm, I'm more of the purple, but, uh, you know, but not. Yeah, man, that was show That'd was just. Violet, uh, the Violet Witch. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it was just uh, really amazing. And the. Uh, it wrapped up really amazing, you know. I mean, I feel like we didn't get a cliche ending, you know. Mm -hmm. I think DC would have probably, you know, if DC was doing this, you know, White Vision would have just been New Vision or something, you know. Uh, yeah. But, yeah, it just I feel like they just nailed the landing on that, you know. I've seen people on uh, Twitter trying to compare – it with uh we call it the mandalorian yeah and i mean that that's like ice cream and puppies you know like <laughs> it's not even apples and oranges it's not even you know in the same you know genre you know i found them both very entertaining uh very very the last two see the last well the last two seasons of mandalorian and the, the season of one division i found very entertaining I the finale was as, as it probably goes to everybody's head cannon wasn't what I was expecting. Um, everybody thought there was going to be a big cameo. Who was going to show up? Was it going to be Doctor Strange or or Mark Hamill as Chithon uh, <laughs> or what? You know, and uh, there was a little bit of a fault to how they they publicized it because there was some tease that there was going to be a big cameo on a Mark Hamill scale level, Luke Skywalker level. But whatever, it was still a pretty pretty high level of entertainment it was going to a movie on the small screen they spared no cost on the the effects visually for that show it was a it, it was like watching a like i said a big mcu movie on us on your streaming platform service at your house or on your computer or wherever you're watching it and by the way vision the the, the elephant in the room is that vision and wanda are one of the most oddball couples in the history <laughs> In the history of movie TV, I mean, it's in line with some of the ones from the past. There's there's Mork and Mindy, Mork and Alien, of course, with Mindy, a human being. Uh, there's Beauty and the Beast, another odd, interesting couple there. Hey, how's it going? How's it going? And then uh, also Martha Stewart and, and Snoop Dogg, another really <laughs> interesting uh, uh, from, from the past of television history. Also, by the way, did you ever see this when Snoop and Martha did these? Uh, they did a Titanic, their own version of Titanic. Oh, that's so great. And then they did my favorite was when they came back and they did a ghost one. <laughs> by the way, when I see this, I'm kind of like suddenly Martha Stewart kind of hot in that photo. <laughs> I'd holler. <laughs> yeah, I know you're going to get a good meal. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I'm, I can't make any promises on anything else, but you're not going to get, you're going to get, well, you're going to get pretty good, pretty good cooking. <laughs> so, not, not, wouldn't be, wouldn't be too bad of a date. Uh, anyway, I thought those were pretty funny, but yeah, Wanda's, Wanda, Scarlet, uh, Wanda, and uh, Vision, rather. Um, really interesting couple. One of the most uh, uh, unlikely couples in the history of movie te television. Uh, somehow works. It's just works. One of those things. So just like those other ones I showed you, they're all kind of oddball, but they they somehow work. Man, just like when they started just telling more of her story, like her backstory. You know, it was just like wow. You no, know, then yeah. you kind of get that idea of like why she kind of retreated and kind of found her place in those sitcoms, you know, mm -hmm. because like, that's what she saw like during those like hard times. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 
Yeah, oh, it goes deep. When they go back into, I think it was on the episode, the, the eighth episode, so the next to last finale, when she's uh, forced to go back and, and re-see those, those experiences. Um, by the way, without getting too into detail about it, because uh, it's pretty personal, I had an experience recently where I had a dream that was very vivid, taking me back to kind of my past and something in my childhood. And it was really weird. Cause it was like, it was almost like I was getting to see like the same thing with the one to deal where she was getting kind of an open the curtain and kind of look back at something in her pa past and see it from the sidelines almost, but watching it again. So it's our Christmas you, Carol, <laughs> it, was her, it was her Christmas Carol. Would you want to be able to do, if you could do that, if you were, if someone said, okay, we can do this. You want to go back and see something. Would you want to be able to do that yourself? Like what she was doing on that episode. Mm. Well, that's a huge philosophical thing. Man, only if I could pick, pick the times. <laughs> well, yeah, no, you could pick three things. These are three things you can go in. And I'll open a portal, and I'm gonna, you can walk in and go see them as they're happening. Maybe you wanted to get some more clarity on something that you 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 had forgotten, and you needed to go back and see it again. Um, of course, it could be all good stuff. You could go back and relive the LSU national championship, and you could be on the sideline for. Sure How do you know me this well? How do you know me this well? I'm sure you that, by the way. I'm sure you that as well. Um, oh, uh, okay. Uh, someone told me my my audio is very low. Thank you for for. I'm going to turn it up a little bit. We were having some sound issues earlier in the before we started the show and I might've turned that down, not realizing I had turned it down too low. Thank you, Jamie. I appreciate it for the, uh, for the, the heads up. Sounded like a transformer earlier. It sounded like a transformer <laughs> earlier. So we were messing with the audio and then I might've turned it down and not realized it was, it was too low, but thank you for that, for, for helping us. Our audio guy from afar making the, uh, the adjustment there for us. Um, or audio person. Um, so anyway, yeah, the, the big fan of the show. I uh, loved it. Um, it was if this is the starting point for Disney Plus MCU streaming, pretty good. Um, or he said that it could also have been your audio that was super loud. I keep turning up and down. Oh, okay, well we'll we'll go in on post for sure and we'll adjust it all uh, and and uh, and tweak it if we need to. Oh, but, thanks. Yeah. So it, yeah. Anyway, you sound good on my end, but yeah, it could be uh, could be something with a. Uh, with the computer being a little bit up, I'll, 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 I'll tweak it a little bit. Yeah. So anyway, this show is great. I really enjoyed it. If this is the starting point for the MCU, gosh, where are we going from here? Um, unbelievable. Oh, I know where we're going. I know exactly where we're going. We're going here <laughs> in four days, five days. Uh, we're going to be on Friday, which has become kind of the day of release of new episodes for Disney plus with all their big shows. They've had, uh, you know, Mandalorian always drops on Friday, usually, and uh, now One Division. So it seems like at least up to this point, Fridays has been their big drop day for new new shows. Man, I I think okay, unless I'm getting, I thought there was like they're dropping on. No, okay, no, that's going to be Bad Batch. They're going to drop on Tuesday and True. then Friday. You True. know, that, and that makes uh, sense. So they're going to. But yeah, I was confusing that, that with uh, Falcon and Winter Soldier. Yeah, the uh, Bad Batch is going to come out on May Fourth Day. Are they going to have another episode that same week? Are they going to? Do yeah, two? yeah. There's going to be two episodes that week. Yeah. For wow. some reason, I had that confused with uh, Falcon and uh, Winter Soldier. Wow. Look at this. I was <laughs> looking at this. I took this photo from the trailer, and I'm thinking that's like being the third wheel on a date. <laughs> you know, the two the two are really into each other, and you're kind of just off to the side there, and you're like, uh looking at your watch or you're looking at your phone. You're like trying to come up with an excuse, how you're going to smoothly kind of get yourself out of there because the, the two have hit it off quite well. They seem to be really into each other, but a lot of people are not happy with the new look, by the way, of both characters. I know some people didn't like the, the shorter hair for, uh, for winter soldier and the leather motorcycle outfits. I mean, where are you at on that? Man, you know, I let the artists do their things, man. You know, if I don't like it, I'll make my own. <laughs> I do know that, you know, this is a model that started with George Lucas back in the 70s. When they would come out with a new Star Wars movie, the characters would get a new look. How many different Princess Leia's and different costumes were there? How many different Luke Skywalker's did you have? You had them in the X-Wing costume. You had them in the white um, kind of 
bathrobe thing with the yellow leggings he wore in, in the New Hope. You had the uh, the the the, the khaki uh, looks like an Eddie Bauer kind of jacket and pants that he wore. Oh uh, yeah, safari outfit. So he had different, you know, the dark the dark night. He wore the all black Han Solo, different hairstyle, changed the jacket a little bit different in each movie. So it became kind of a model f- from George Lucas's days. It sells toys. It sells new yeah, toys. Even uh, Darth Vader, you know, was changing like subtly between every movie. You True. know, like. When uh, I've seen, some, I guess, a meme or something, but it was like showing all the versions of Vader. Yeah. And it was like, yeah, it was like, especially between like A New Hope, you know, and uh, Empire. Yeah. You know, Empire, the helmet was like really shiny, you know, uh, what we call it, uh, New Hope. You know, the Vader you know, helmet was just, it was slightly imperfect, you know, like yeah. had different textures. Yeah, so it's you know George Lucas was kind of started that it sold sold new toys because if you do the same costume, it's even in sports now. They have these special; they'll do these special like uh, event uniforms for for in football where they'll have a, a retro jersey day or they'll have um, special limited edition jersey day that sells merch, new merch. So you have to go out and run out and buy like the special edition, uh, whatever the <laughs> polished you or, or Saints jersey that they're putting out on a, you know, it's a, it's a new, it's new merch. So it's a model that, you know, it works. It's good business. It sells more toys. Um, they do it. They do it. My son's favorite show. We were talking about that at the beginning of the show, how they actually come out with new versions of the show just so they could have new versions of the characters to sell merch for. So it, it's, a, it's a model that works. But anyway, yeah, we're, we're coming up on Falcon Winter Soldier. And um, I'm pretty excited about it. The early reviews. By the way, this this coming week is, I heard a, a, another content creator say this, and I had kind of thought the same thing, that this coming week, possibly one of the biggest weeks ever in the history of superheroes. I know that's a big claim to make, but with the, the premiere of Falcon and Winter Soldier on Friday, the second live action MCU series in the history of MCU, Disney Plus series, not counting uh, the the shows that had on uh, Netflix and then the the Agents of Shield, but actual Disney Plus live action original content. Then the Snyder Cut, which by the way, the early reviews on Snyder Cut is that it is that good. The hype is real. Oh wow! And, and I'm starting to see people even suggesting, which is a big suggestion to make, that it could fix DC going forward. It's that good. Like at, least, at least fix some of the things that we had problems with with that uh, original Justice League movie. A lot of the problems with the villain, the CGI, um, the really the real uh, kind of fast editing that kind of seemed to move a little quick and didn't really seem to the story didn't really seem to build. Uh, so anyway, and they fixed Jared Leto's Joker. It looks like in the trailer with his oh, hair wow. and the look and everything. So anyway, if that's true, if if Snyder Cut is that good. And it lives up to the hype. They're having a premiere on Wednesday with Kevin Smith hosting it with Zack Snyder. Then Falcon and Winter Soldier coming out on Friday. I don't know when we've had a week where we had that much stuff that close together. Oh, man, I'm kind of wanting to get HBO Max now. <laughs> yeah. I will have to figure some, yeah, figure out some way to get to, you know, I can't like something. But anyway, yeah. <laughs> Find somebody you know that has it at least, uh, and, and, get, and, get it, and get it going. Uh, we can make a, a few, a few calls, maybe. Let's see what we can find out. Um, anyway, yeah. So we're excited about uh, this week coming up. It's a pretty big week, and uh, yeah, man. It's like I like the uh, DC characters more, but like the Marvel movies and the Marvel stories, you know, have just been better. You know, then it's just kind of looking at okay, we had the Marvel, what we call it. Uh, in game and like all those like even like long movies, yeah. but man, there's still like certain beats in a movie, you know. Like there's only so many r- rooms for uh, plot twists and such, yeah. you know. To be able to visit Westview, you know, for 30, 35 minutes, forty five minutes, you know, once a week for you know nine weeks. You know, I really like the idea that you couldn't have told WandaVision's story 
in a two hour movie, two and a half hour movie. Yeah. Like you really needed to be in Westview, yeah. you know, for some time. Got a little meme here, action here for uh, Scarlet Witch. My mom, when I do something wrong, my mom, when she says, when she does, when she does something wrong. <laughs> so, <laughs> one division means earlier. By the way, I got one more thought. I got two more thoughts on one division. Uh, first of all, what stole the this the whole season for me, and they were my favorite episodes, uh, was this th- this trio. Oh yeah, I want that show. Monica Ram, yes, Monica Rambo, Agent Wu, Darcy. That three, the three together, and originally with just Darcy and Agent Wu, and then Monica Rambo comes into the picture more, and they're together at least on one episode where they're they're together a lot. I love that that dynamic, that chemistry. Now I have a feeling in the case of Monica Rambo especially with us now finding out you know that she's going to be spectrum not the cable company by the way but oh the- i hate her oh no she's not spectrum the cable company yeah <laughs> oh, spectrum the superhero so uh uh by the way quite a uh some illustration there of her that's a <laughs> i'll just leave it at that but yeah that uh, that ca- she she's going to be on moving on to bigger things. I think she eventually gets her own movie, or if not a movie, her own standalone series in the same vein as a, a Falcon Winter Soldier. If she gets a movie, that would be a huge milestone on the level of Black Panther because it would be the first black female superhero that I'm aware of to have a major movie. So that would be a huge another huge. Now we did have a, a female lead uh, villain. Because they did, I think they did a Catwoman woman movie several years ago with Halle Berry. Um, but I, I, you know, I, kind of, when I think Catwoman, I still think of Catwoman is more of a villain, uh, although she is kind of working in the gray area sometimes. But that would be a big deal. Loved her character, but I think at very minimum we'll get an Agent Wu and Darcy, maybe series like a limited series. Oh I yeah, that. I would take that. that. They were hey. so good together. So many little things too. Like there's the thing where Agent Wu. You remember they tie these things together so well in the MCU, and that's why the MCU is still so superior to every to every to the DC um, in their storytelling because all the little details that they tie together from the universe. Uh, Agent Wu and Ant Man. You remember where uh, Ag- uh, Ant Man the card trick? Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. You know, the card trick, and Agent Wu is like, "Can you if you just te- can you teach me how to do that?" And then he shows up in this series. And he pulls his business card out when he sees Monica Rambo, and he's doing the he's doing it. He learned how to do it. <laughs> it's, the, it's the greatest story arc probably in the history of movie <laughs> is Agent Wu's learning how to do that card trick and where it started oh, wow. like years ago. And and yeah, they, and, and they pulled it into this. Uh, <laughs> I thought that was super clever. Um, but there's a lot of little things like that that's always in this. Uh, they, that they brought back some of the retro costumes from the original comic books of Scarlet Witch and Vision. Like when they have the Halloween episode, I love that. Um, by the way, I, this town, a real town in New Jersey, from what I understand, I looked it up. Did you know this? Oh wow! No, no, no. In fact, it's listed as one of the top ten places to live in New Jersey. I wonder if that's dropped though since this show. Because <laughs> I'm not about that puppet life of being control i do okay i have one more theory too i think that because of the, the way the show ended and it kind of came full circle with her lifting the wall or whatever you want to call it um or the shield or the whatever the the force field that was lifted and everybody kind of going back to normal in this town in their normal life it was sort of alluded to earlier that she had kind of improved some of these people's lives in the situations they were in do you think there's maybe a couple people that she maybe did a solid for on the way out? Maybe some people had some, had some debts. Maybe she paid off some debts for some people. Maybe she deposited a little extra money. I mean, because she owes them, I think. I think she kind of owes them a little bit. Yeah, it's like, I, I hope so, man. It was just, I remember, I think maybe it was one of the Superman movies, you know, after 9-11. And, like, you're seeing, like, buildings fall over. I'm like... You know, even if the people are out, like, man, there's so much, you know. You now, I think that was uh, mentioned in, like, one of the later Superman movies, just, like, all the damage that's happening, you yeah. know, in, in that universe, in Metropolis or whatever. And it's just like, yeah, um, I was I was getting the feeling, you know, 
yeah, they were getting back to their regular, you know, New Jersey lives. But, um, yeah, like, hopefully it's improved, man. You know, it's just like, why if that happened to us? You know, <laughs> like, you know, I mean, yeah. that's, you know, however long that lasted, you know, you're not in your universe. You're in the Scarlet Witches universe. Oh, yeah, that, that was incredible when that name got used, you know. Yeah. For the first time, yeah. you know, it's like, oh, it was always Wanda, you know? Yeah. Did you notice that on the newer Superman movies, they didn't want to call him Superman and they were trying to find up some, they were looking for some other way to explain the S on his chest. Oh yeah. Yeah. I mean, I like to like that line, you know, like my planet stands for hope, you know? Yeah. Yeah. So they, they, they were trying to do some things with that as well. Okay. Black Superman suit, by the way, in Snyder cut, it's a black, if they go back to the black Superman suit, and I think they used my idea from years ago, or like two, three years ago when Justice League came out. I said, you hide the bad CGI uh, mustache with a beard. And it looks like he's got five o'clock shadow in the new version. They oh, added, damn. They added a five o'clock shadow. I think that's how they. they well, like, what kind of razors is uh, Superman using? I mean, if he's got like that strong ass hair, like that's got to be more in a Mach 3 that I'm using. As long as it's not a kryptonite shave, a razor. <laughs> Then he's then he's in good good form. All right, it's time for on this 143rd episode of the Third Pop Podcast, and I want to thank every one of you out there that have been peeking in on what we're doing, uh, spending some time on your Sunday evening. And there's a lot of things going on. That oh wait wait, man, did you say 143? 143. That's that's like that's like I love you. Like one letter, four letters, three. Letters. <laughs> <laughs> yeah that's that we and we do we love you we love you and um, oh by the way i talked about at the beginning of the show how i'm at level like 10 on the uh on covid and the pandemic and and how i yeah i kind of hit rock bottom at some point um bird watching now i'm out bird watching before the show <laughs> that's kind of and you can see the distress in my face of no football season uh it's a sunday and it's a pandemic. This is what I do now as I bird watch on Sundays. So, man, I went and watched basketball today. Watch Bama and LSU yeah. play uh, basketball. Uh, man, Bama won, but LSU wow. is still in the uh, the tournament. Okay. Man, like this is like the first year in like twenty years I haven't been doing South by Southwest. Yeah. And I'm like, you know, I used to just start calling, you know, South by march madness you know like it was so all-consuming like i really didn't have time to pay attention to much else like during south by season and uh yeah it was strange being able to kind of like do other stuff yeah yeah and not having the fomo which could be a good thing and uh, <laughs> yeah, fear of missing out that a lot of people would have sometimes this time of year there's been no need of that uh acl by the way still uh going ahead as far as we know for this year they're 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 working on trying to get going get, get things going for for the fall so yeah fingers crossed for them uh that'd be great i think next year they got it like for south by they need to have like uh like a, a six week south by to make up for the the year the two years now that we missed bro that might kill me man <laughs> like i go hard enough for nine days <laughs> be a little bit much be a little bit much all right on agree or disagree I know we got some agree or disagree music. We're gonna we're gonna get that going, and uh, we'll have that right now. Okay, here it is. 143 episode. Be bird watching again tomorrow. So if you all are interested in socially distanced bird watching, give me a call. Okay, number one. Disney. Speaking of things opening back up, Disney theme parks are now finally have a schedule and their plans to open up. And I remember back in 2019. We were all making plans about going to uh, to Galaxy's Edge. Oh yeah, when we might want to go to Galaxy's Edge and trying to figure it out on a calendar when we might be able to do that because it was it was just opening, and then of course COVID happened and then everything was closed. But now Disney's opening back up, which also means Galaxy Edge and all the things that go along with it. But it's going to be very different. Uh, limited capacity, only fifteen percent of the normal capacity. So here's my question for you: Mask, unless you're eating or drinking beverages. So here's my question for you. Would you now consider 
as it opens up with limited capacity, would you consider that actually agree or disagree that this might be the best time to go because it would be a lot less crowded and the lines to get on things would be a lot less, um, less chaotic. Agree or disagree with that? Man, let me go with uh, disagree. You know, it's not the full experience. Yeah. You know, I mean, yeah, it might be 15% of the people there, but it's not a hundred percent. Yeah. You know, Galaxy's Edge. It's not a hundred percent Disney World or land. You know, it's just it's it's not there yet. You know, like yeah, I've been uh, really wanting to go really experience the whole thing, spend way too much money. Uh, like right now, I'm like, maybe next year, you know, maybe 2023. Uh, yeah, it's, it's not, you know, it's not there yet. Mm -hmm. Hopefully ne next year, next year, you start planning it now, maybe start planning it. Okay. So number two, we talk about the Snyder cut. They talked about how people are really optimistic, and there was great re early reviews of people that have given it some great buzz so far. Don't know if that's just hype, but we'll find out. The Snyder Cut reel is going to have several additional villains added from the one. And you remember the original one had the, the character that you had. I remember you had made fun of the name. Uh, yeah, Steppenwolf. Steppenwolf. I, I am sure Steppenwolf was a 70s band. Or a song or something. Yeah, yeah. So Steppenwolf was like the a villain. 70s, like soft rock, like a yacht rock band, you know? Yeah. Like I yeah. had their album, I, you know? Yeah, they had a, there was a, during that era of music. So Ste it didn't even sing in the movie. He doesn't sing. <laughs> another big disappointment. You bring in Steppenwolf and he doesn't sing. <laughs> in my head canon, he sings. So Steppenwolf came in. They, was, that was the villain. It was supposed to be the Justice League, the first Super Friends live-action movie in modern time. We were all hyped up for it. And you had, you had Superman. You had Batman. You had Wonder Woman. You had the freaking Flash. I mean, you had, you had All-Stars. And you bring in Steppenwolf. I know. I agree with you on that. I thought it was a, a misfire. And they've made a misfire in other uh, DC movies in their choice of villains. Not all of them, but in some of them. So it's like the some... Batman movies, man. Batman, you know, the villains were, you know, as big a part of the show as Batman was. Yeah. You know, for to have like the the all stars, the Avengers of, no, I'm joking, <laughs> the Super Friends, <laughs> to have all them together, and you're going to go with like, you know, the great value. Uh, Villain, <laughs> yeah, no, no, I just thought it was a, a little bit, yeah, I got a little too cute there by doing that. Yeah, but anyway, like, this, this movie promises to ramp it up. There's multiple villains in this movie, might even be some new superheroes in this movie that weren't in the original one. It's four hours long, by the way. It's a, it's a mini series, so plan an afternoon for it or a day. But anyway, do you think that this is actually Snyder? actually making an effort to reboot the whole DCEU by putting all these new characters in there? Or is it just what it is? And it's just a director's cut. It's content for a streaming platform. Do you agree, agree, do you agree or disagree with my thought that this is a full on like way to restart everything? Even though they deny it, they say it's not. Just because I am like the most hopeful person in the world. I want it to be like, I want the DCEU to be, as goes the Marvel universe. Yeah. Like there is, you know, like I said, man, I relate to the characters, you know, like being an adoptee, like I related to Superman, you know, for the longest, I, you know, used to joke, like I'm sure I came from another planet, you know, yeah. and then my parents passed and then I felt more like Batman <laughs> being like a grown ass orphan. Right. <laughs> so it's like, I can relate to some of those characters. Mm -hmm. Uh, but yeah, man, I, um, to me, Marvel has a lot better stories, a lot better movies, you know, I want DC to, to stick the landing like with wonder woman, you think, okay, they figured it out. No, they didn't, you know, uh, I want it to be better. Like I want it to be good. I want it to be on par with the MCU. Yeah. Not there yet. It. Would yeah. love it if it is. Yeah, we'd love it. I'd be all in 
Um, if it is, it'd be great. It deserves to be. Those characters deserve to be. They're great characters. Like I said, they're 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 classic all time. Iconic. Iconic. Yeah. Iconic. Yeah, they're iconic characters. So they deserve it. Okay. Now switching over to MCU, a little MCU talk. Robert Downey Jr., who I proposed the other day on TikTok and said that Robert Downey Jr. is the Jerry West of the the MCU. He deserves to get a, to be made into the. They make him into the logo now. He's like the like the NBA logo is Jerry West. Uh, some people want him to change it to Kobe Bryant, but any either way, Jerry West has been the logo for a number of decades. I think that Robert Downey Jr. should be the logo for the MCU. He's that uh, he's he was that important to the start of the MCU and his success with Iron Man and getting people excited about the MCU. Well, here's my question: Do you agree or disagree that? In the comic books, Iron Man comes back. After Iron Man dies, Iron Man comes back. And the storyline is that he uh, uploaded his his brain to an AI, which, by the way, may someday be a reality. Something you Black, mirror. Black Mirror. <laughs> Black Mirror. Black uh, Mirror. Black Mirror. Yes. yes. <laughs> Black Mirror. And also a movie. They made a movie of that with uh, Johnny Depp where he uploaded his brain to an AI and he, he was like Max Headroom. He was talking creepily through a television to a movie screen to a, a computer screen to his girlfriend, like he was ha haunting her from from the past or whatever. But anyway, um, in the comic books, he does that. I think Black Mirror may have, may have stole it from the Marvel comics because it was in the Marvel comics. Uh, Tony Stark uploads his AI or his brain to a computer, and then they clone him later and put his brain in, and then he's like the second like two point do you do you agree or disagree that they should introduce that storyline and bring back Robert Downey Jr. at least for a short bit of time, like a curtain call? And I'm not proposing it for this phase. I'm proposing it for like a next phase, like maybe do phase four, let that be its own thing, and then bring him back maybe in phase five as kind of a curtain call, maybe for like just two or three movies. Do you agree or disagree with that idea? I mean, I know that's like part of like comic book stuff, you know, Um comic book superheroes like it's common for them to come back right but i think death has to mean something in some of those universes yeah, yeah you no know, the other thing it's like i mean i know we're talking about another franchise but you know look at the terminator man yeah. like they're doing old ass arnold terminator like you know robert downing jr and it's like if you give it 10 years He's gonna be like old ass Robert Downey Jr. Yeah, he'll be getting you know, up there. Yeah, you're gonna see, you know, AARP Robert Downey Jr. Like, I don't want to see Iron Man having like iron deficiency. <laughs> like, oh. <laughs> oh. I almost don't want to see like you know Robert Downey Jr. doing like Metamucil. <laughs> you know, it's just like man, you look at the Terminator, like. I don't like that the Terminator got older. Of course, I know Arnold's a living, breathing actor, and he's getting older. You're getting a delayed, yeah. a delayed. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> find it. Still getting used to this board. There you go. You can miss your window. Like I did with that sound bite. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, there you go. All right, uh, all right. I, I like that. I like that take, uh, and it makes it makes good sense. And I know a lot of people feel the same way. Okay, and I know also a lot of people that will be delighted if he came back. Uh, so there's there's you know, I for me it's how you approach it. If you can make it, execute it well, and make it work and write it well, maybe I would like to see at least a hologram at some point. Uh, just talking to uh, Peter Parker would be fun. And he is, oh, coming, yeah. he is rumored to be coming back for Black, for Black, not Black Mirror, but Black Wind, uh, Widow, because that's a prequel. So in that in that timeline of Black Widow, he's still around. So oh, wow. it's very feasible he could make a cameo in Black Widow. A lot of people, because that movie's been delayed for a year now, so we haven't been able to see it and find out if he did show up. But he's rumored to be in that. I believe he's in that for at least a cameo. And then also he is voicing his character for the uh, What If series. Oh, wow. Um, He's still around. He's still around. Okay. Thoughts and advice brought to you today by the one and only Jazz One coming to you virtually in the uh, in the virtual 
Let it pop down. Now, now I'm really going to overuse the sound effects now that I've, I'm starting to figure out. <laughs> okay. Jazz one here. Man, this week I've lost my favorite sitcom. You know, I hate to see it go. Hope you no know, good things coming from forward from those guys. But like, man, earlier this afternoon, got word about Drew Brees yep. retiring. Yep. I know it's yep. not a sports show, but, you know, it's like, I think he's like 15 years, you know, one hell of a, uh, a career. You know, part of me wanted to see him come back. Like, man, I'm always the hope guy. I want to see him come back and get that ring before going out. But the biggest thing is, like, I didn't want to see the guy leave the game on a stretcher, you know. And it was like, that guy was a warrior, you know. And it's just like, man, damn near, like, superhero level, man, you know. Like, talking about an origin story, you know. True Breeze was too small to be a quarterback, too short, you know, too this, too that, you know. But he found a way to do it. And – do it at the highest level, you know, one of the greatest to ever do it, you know. I don't know if that's thoughts and advice, but, man, I'm going I'm, I'm going through all the uh, steps of grief right now, man. Yeah. It's like, yeah. you know, how am I going to watch this game without Drew next season? Yeah. Well, you'll get to watch him with it because he'll be announcing it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> that'll be that consolation. He's taking over the Sunday night football spot, I believe. Oh yeah. So so and and, and we I wish him uh, much success in his new endeavor, moving forward. Oh, absolutely. There in the in the, uh, in the in the box, uh, making the color commentator commentator color commentator as they call it uh, for Sunday night football, big primetime spot. So uh, I'm hoping I hope he's calling a lot of Dallas Cowboy victories next year. Yeah, oh yeah. <laughs> Except if they play the Saints. But, uh, man, it's just like, you know, as I was, I guess, kind of connected to everything earlier. Man, even Kim's, you know, the superhero stuff, man, it's like you only have, like, a finite window, you know. Yeah. Sometimes it feels like we'll keep going until we find something that works, mm -hmm. you know. But, man, it's like we have a, a finite window, you know. Yeah. So it's just like. Trying to try to make the most of every every season in your life, like every game, you know, you never know when it's going to be your last, you know, Le you know, break some records, leave your mark, you yeah. know, get out there and kick some butt. Exactly. Man. Leave your mark. Leave it. Leave it, some good light on the world. Uh, and if you don't know how to do that, then learn how to do that, and then go and do it. And yeah. And and support others because they're they're the your your friends your family their success is your success. When when the people that you are closest to, that's it's a, it's a part of your it's part of your life too. Man, your network is your net worth. You know, yeah. like I'm yeah. hoping he's going to be around. Like I know he's probably going to continue to live in New Orleans, but man, part of me thinks he's going to be back in town here in Austin. Oh, and, I thought uh, about that. I thought about that. You yeah. know, like more than likely, man, it's like, you know, you, I, I've talked to you about this before. Like, I always keep a few crazy goals, you know, a few moonshots, right? Yeah. And, uh, you know, there was like, I made Mark Hamill, like our whole Mark Hamill adventure. I'm like, man, I manifested that. Like, I called that into existence. Mm -hmm. So, like, one of my other crazy goals is just to play catch with Drew Brees. Yeah. And it's like, one day, this will happen. So, uh, you know, if he's retired, he might be visiting family, might run into him at Torchy. Not, no, like, our paths will cross, you know, just like I, Mark Hamill. Hamill's in Austin, ours. Yeah, just like Mark Hamill. And if you're in Austin, if not Drew Brees, it might be. Uh, it's not living his best life. <laughs> no, no, we want this one. We want this. We want this version. All right, all right. There you go. There you Make go. him the new Tony Stark. <laughs> oh, the multiverse, the multiverse Tony Stark. 
I love it. I love it. Is he going to turn up in the MCU or DCU, EU one of these days? You know, he was, people were pitching him for Aquaman years ago before they, they cast Jason Momoa. I'm glad they went with Jason Momoa. I can't imagine someone better, but, but there was people making memes of McConaughey as Aquaman. Man, I, I tell you how I was going to put him in Star Wars. Because yeah. if Woody, Hel Woody can play, uh, what's his name, in the solo movie? Yeah. Like, I think you can, you know, swap in, you know, McConaughey and Woody for any movie. Like, whatever movie there are, you can swap the other out. It's basically the same damn movie. So, uh, yeah, I, I wouldn't mind seeing McConaughey in a Star Wars movie. They have proven that they, they, are, they have been in the same room together. We do know they're they're two different people because they were on a true detective, <laughs> and they were also in a movie. They did a movie together. I'm trying to remember the name of the movie, but they did kind of their own Truman. There's a kind of like a Truman Show type story. Yeah, McConaughey from years ago. Uh, that, that movie's at the tip of my tongue, but yeah, you know what I'm talking about, don't you? They played brothers oh, yeah. in that movie. Oh and yeah, they, they seem to love working with each other. Uh, and Harrelson used to hang out in Austin all the time. I don't know if he still does, but but uh, and McConaughey, of course, being in Austin. But yeah, how about uh, who plays Drew Brees in the movie? If there was a Drew Brees movie. Matthew McConaughey. <laughs> but serious, Matthew McConaughey. <laughs> oh. Well, they both have an Austin and a Louisiana connection. because. Oh, exactly. <laughs> All right. Jazz One, thank you so much. It's good to see you virtually. I can't wait to see you for real. I'm tired of looking at a ring light across the room. I want to see you. Across the room from me. Just got to put my picture in the uh, ring light. <laughs> can we, need, can we, get a, we can get a cardboard cutout made of you. Did you, did you. did you know about one more thing on the cardboard cutouts? You know, people that were getting their cardboard cutouts put in baseball and football stadiums. Yeah. In basketball games. And they had a thing where you could, if you donated so much money, you paid, you could, you could pay and have your cardboard cutout put it. Were you tempted to do that? I was so tempted, man. I was. If, yeah, if I, I was. wasn't like struggling earlier in the year, yeah. you know, trying to find work, like yeah. I really wanted to do that for uh, LSU. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, and hopefully, if the universe conspires, man, I hopefully get to go to a game this year. You know, I uh, yeah, the, I, the I real missed. the real you, not the cardboard cutout. Exactly. Exactly. You know, it's like, I think I, part of me is like, I want to get the cardboard cut out, but I don't think you got to keep it afterwards. Like if you got to keep it, I probably would have definitely done it. I think it depended. I know like for people like for the Houston Astros, they would send it to you after, oh, you, damn. after it appeared in the game. So I wanted to do captain badass. Yeah. <laughs> So you can only dream, you can dream. I hope you, I, yeah, I, I believe, and I'm optimistic you'll be back in the stadium this year, as we all will, and um, that'll be a good thing. Thank you so much, all of you out there as well. Thank you so much. Have a good day, hour, second, millisecond, all that stuff, and good night. Outro time. <laughs> Thunder Pop is a Hit the Bricks production.